Uh, this is part two of unit three, Origins of Agriculture and Nutrition. Early man had discovered that if they planted too many crops together, they would get a lot of pests. Uh, this was most noteworthy in Ireland when they had the huge potato famine. And although the potato grew very easily there and fed so many people that the population almost tripled. What happened was they developed a fungus. This fungus rapidly spread and destroyed other crops. We had millions die. And we had millions come over to the United States. Man did realize this. And early man, for some reason, planted different crops in different areas, and they all seemed to work together. Uh, it seemed to hold out the weeds. It seemed to hold out the pests. Um, we are just getting back to this right now. We realize that this is a problem, but in order to feed thousands of people, it's easiest to plant all the same crop. We have to feed all these people. Now, the, as you know, the population is continuing to grow and grow. Can we get enough food out there to feed all the people? People need proteins, carbohydrates, fats, fiber, minerals, and vitamins. We saw that in unit one. We have to develop a way to feed all these people. And we believe we have the way by using uh, crops that have changed some. We can use fertilizers. Otherwise, we will not be able to feed the earth at this time. Uh, there are countries, for example, France, uh, that doesn't believe in the use of uh, different seeds, different fertilizers, and they are consequently spending more and more of their monies on food. Money that could be spent for other areas is being spent on food right now. We have to come to some consensus among us how to grow the food. Different types of food that we need. Uh, fiber in our diet is an example for one of them. There was a physician who went to Africa and noticed that there is a huge difference of the incidence of uh, colon cancer, colon problems in certain groups of Africans who ate a large amount of fiber. And this picture just shows you an example as you're walking through the fields, you see these huge piles, and that's because the animals are eating a large amount of fiber. If humans do the same thing, we would have less problems with our colon, small intestine, and stomach. However, we have to have 30 grams a day, uh, which is possibly uh, 10 times as much as we have right now. Proteins is another example of food that we have to have. You saw in unit one what the protein structure was like, how they're composed of essential amino acids. There's 20 of them that we need. Our bodies can only make 11 of them. Early humans realized that you needed to mix plants together in order to get all of the proteins and essential amino acids. Uh, this picture shows an example of a disease called marasmus in which people get low calories and low amounts of uh, different vitamins and minerals also. Early humans realize that, well, beans, they might not have the essential amino acid methionine, but they have a lot of tryptophan and lysine. They realized that they mixed it with corn, they could get the methionine back. So different cultures defined how the food should be worked together. For example, now you see rice, beans, and corn all together in a meal. This solved the problem. It's not that you also, it's not also that you have a lot of proteins. You have to have the right types of protein also. You have to have all those 20 different essential amino acids. This picture 
taken in the late 1960s shows a child who's probably getting enough calories, but he's not getting enough proteins. You don't get enough proteins, in this case, the, the belly swells up, the legs and feet swell up, the hair starts to fall out, uh, and your skin becomes very shiny. We have to have the right amount of uh, fats and oils. Uh, these are also derived from plants. Uh, remember that oils are liquid at room temperature and fats are solid at room temperature. They are all composed of triglycerides. And if you look at the list right here, you can see which are the good oils and which are the worst oils. It's very big right now. You can see that they are trying to promote the Mediterranean diet. Mediterranean diet has a lot of olive oil in there. Olive oil is one of the good oils. Um, you can see the different blue colors right here, which shows the amount of saturated versus monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. Uh, this just means uh, how much of the hydrogen ion is attached to that fat. The good oils have more mono and poly and fat unsaturated fats. Another important factor that plants give us are vitamins. Uh, one of the first vitamins that was discovered was thiamine or B1. This was discovered back uh, by the Japanese because what they found out is that they had a fair amount of uh, uh, wars back then in World War I, for example. They would have prison camps. And if you were a good soldier uh, versus the prisoners, you got the better rice. And the better rice was the white rice. Uh, this white rice had the skin of it or the bran part was then polished off so you had this nice looking white rice versus brown rice or rice that had the bran or skin on it what they didn't realize at the time that as they did this they took away a lot of vitamins the most important one at this time was thiamine in disease with the lack of thiamine is called beriberi in the japanese prison of war camps it turned out that the prisoners did well. The officers suffered. The officers were losing weight. They had problems with their mind. They had pain and weakness in their limbs. They could barely walk after a while. They had swelling uh, of the legs and arms. The heart was irregular. It wasn't into 1912 that someone looked into this and found that there was a chemical which he called vitamin that actually was essential for human life another vitamin that was there was called vitamin c uh, this was found on long trips especially on sailing ships uh, at that time it could take several months to travel from europe to the Americas. It could take some time to travel from the eastern end of the Mediterranean to the western end of the Mediterranean. You had to have all the food with you. You had to have food that survived all this time besides water. Food could be kept by using salt. Uh, salt was put on meats. Salt was put on other foods to preserve it over this long sailing trip. Uh, they would have bread, which they could preserve too. What they didn't have were fresh fruits. Fresh fruit had vitamin C in it. So as you had longer and longer trips, uh, people would end up getting weaker and weaker. Uh, their skin would start to swell, and their teeth would fall out, they'd start bleeding. And then and eventually they may die. What happened was that uh, the British then discovered that if they took fresh lemons and limes on their trips with them, they could have the sailors take 
several limes a day. Of course, this was very bitter, so they had to mix it with rum, and they prevented disease. Consequently, they were called limeys. On the other hand, the Germans, instead of using lemons and limes, they used cabbage. And so they were cabbage as forms of sauerkraut, and so they were called krauts. Another vitamin and mineral that was found out there was something called iodine. And iodine was present in fish from the ocean. Uh, this is a picture of a, a lady who has a lack of iodine in her diet. And what happens is that iodine is essential for the thyroid gland to function. Uh, the thyroid gland needs iodine. If it senses there isn't enough iodine in the system, it continues to produce more and more of the thyroid hormone. Uh, this causes the thyroid to get bigger and bigger. And you see this picture of this woman right here. That this thyroid gland in her neck just grew and grew because she didn't have enough iodine. And the thyroid thought this and continued to produce. This was not found along the coast because the fish that were in the ocean were rich in iodine. But as you got into the interior of the continent, we saw more and more of this disease. This used to be endemic in Minnesota. So they thought the fish were there, the fish could protect them. However, the fish were freshwater and didn't have the iodine in it. This has been known for years. Uh, in China, for example, before Christ was born, they found that if you ate this particular plant, uh, sargassum, you could shrink that uh, goyer patient. Nowadays, uh, what we do is we put iodine into the salt and we have almost cured this problem. This salt in the diet has uh, eliminated in most affluent countries. Where you see it here in, in the darker colors are, uh, for example, it becomes a very significant public health problem. It's more prevalent, of course, in third world nations. Um, there's other things that happen besides fish. You can find it in Jerusalem artichokes, which were native to North America. You can find it in spinach, potatoes, vitamin A, another uh, mineral and vitamin. It's found in many different plants. And here's a list here where it shows you where vitamin A is present. Now, we really think of it as being in carrots. And we know of it because of night blindness. Uh, during world wars, we found that people that ate carrots seemed to function better at night. Uh, you could see. So night blindness became one of the first signs of a vitamin A deficiency. Uh, what happens is you don't have enough uh, vitamin A, your cornea becomes dry, which damages the retina and the cornea. It's huge problems throughout the world. Uh, this map here shows you the prevalence of vitamin A deficiency, and it's huge in Africa and in India. There are thousands of people that go blind every year. What can we do? Well, we have found that we can genetically change rice. And we have come through with something called golden rice. Golden rice here, which is the one that is yellow, has been genetically modified to produce vitamin A in the rice. This solves the problem of vitamin A deficiency. So those thousands of people that would go blind every year do not need to go blind. However, because of the problems of uh, genetic manipulation, uh, this is not accepted uh, throughout the world. Niacin, another of the vitamins, was characterized by bilateral dermatitis. You see this in uh, people who have a largely cereal diet such as maize or sorghum. We don't see it much anymore because people have realized that you need to mix your foods. Iron deficiency. Uh, 
This is one of our common uh, nutrition deficiencies. Uh, we need iron for the transportation of oxygen in our system. Uh, we have a chemical called hemoglobin, which binds up with our oxygen and moves it around. Um, this binding occurs in the lung, and then the oxygen is transported throughout the blood system to the smallest blood vessels and then right to the cells. When the oxygen is given up, carbon dioxide is taken up and brought back to the lungs and given up. Our blood cells do not work right without oxygen. Again, here's a map which again shows the prevalence of where we have iron deficiency. Once again, in third world countries uh, that do not have a large amount of vegetables. It's the dark green leafy vegetables that seem to have the most iron in them. Throughout this time, the in the United States government has come with a lot of ideas of how, how we can get the best food into our systems, not just meat and potatoes. And we needed to add a combination of vegetables and fruits to us. Uh, this is an idea of how this started. It started back in 1916 with the idea of having food for young children. Uh, the government came up with this. As you can see over time, uh, it has changed from the 50s from the eat the basic seven every day to the food pyramid where we had in 1992 we had uh, bread on the very bottom and fats oils and sweets used sparingly at the very top this has changed now in 2005 we have something called my pyramid which gives us the steps to a healthier you it shows us what we need but we need a lot more fruits and vegetables in our systems uh, if we have more fruits and vegetables we are healthier and we can live a much longer Medical field. 